Hello everybody. Today we're going to go over how to replace a fill valve and a flush valve in a Mansfield toilet. In this particular scenario, the stop cap on the flush valve is broken so that when the toilet goes to flush, the stop cap lifts out and doesn't stop the flush valve from going up any further than it's supposed to. So let's get started in resolving this issue. Let's go over some of the parts that you'll need. First, a tanked bowl kit. Again, I'm working with a Mansfield toilet here. So I bought a kit that contains the molded rubber spud gasket and three tank bolts. This kit costs about $14, um, but it's something that you may need. So I would recommend picking it up while you're at the hardware store. In a prior repair that I've done, the spud gasket on the original toilet had been completely malformed and needed to be replaced. So I was glad that I had it on hand since I ended up needing it. The next piece you're gonna need is the flush valve. Again, this is for a Mansfield toilet. Um, bought an Everbuilt here. This piece here is gonna cost you about eight bucks. When you take it out of the package, the only piece that you really need to remove from this is the hex nut at the bottom. And we'll go over that a little bit later in the video. While I'm in there, I decided to go ahead and replace the fill valve as well. So I bought a Fluid Master, and we'll go over the installation of this piece. These are the components that uh, come in the box. You have the fill valve here itself, you have the fill tube, and then you have a coupling nut and a rubber gasket. And um, we'll go over getting that installed here in a little bit. These are the instructions that it came with. Also, we'll need a, a vice grip or two, and uh, we'll see why here momentarily. Um, it might not be a bad idea to grab a couple of uh, rubber gloves as well. And the last thing that you will need is a 14 millimeter socket wrench. Uh, this is going to come in handy when you're working with your uh, tank to bolt kit. The first thing we're going to do is turn off the water. Then flush the tank to empty the water. This will drain most of the water from the tank, but not all of it. For those of you who may have seen my previous video where I've replaced just the flush valve, I went about emptying the residual water in a different manner. In this particular video, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Here we can see we have about a quarter inch to a half inch of water still left in the tank that will not completely drain just by pushing down the flush lever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the tank from the toilet bowl and I'm going to empty this in a tub. The reason I didn't do that in my last video was because it was in a half bath where I didn't have access to a tub. So to get started with that, we're going to go underneath the toilet and we are going to loosen this coupling nut here. But before you do that, you might want to grab a towel and go ahead and toss it right underneath just to catch any water that may be trapped in the uh, supply line um, that may drip out as you're loosening this up. A lot of this stuff here has been hand tightened, so you may or may not need your vice grips. Just loosen that up and let it hang down and you'll be fine. So far I haven't had any drippage, so I'm good. So after that coupling nut has been removed, you'll want to get underneath and remove the previous tank to bulk kit. Um, in this toilet, these are all little plastic pieces, plastic nuts. So I'm just going to get underneath. There's three of them, one on the left, one in the back middle, and one on the right. Okay, there we go. So now that we're no longer fastened to the toilet bowl itself, I'm going to lift the tank up and then I'm going to empty its contents into the tub. Alright, 
right now that the residual water has been dumped into the tub, now's a good time to put on those rubber gloves and we'll get to work on taking out all of the old parts. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is take out the old screws down here at the bottom. Now the reason I like to replace these is you can see here on my rubber glove, all of the black. That's why I like to wear the gloves when I take these out. Uh, also over time, um, this rubber may no longer form a good seal. Um, and when you go to replace any parts inside and you try to reuse these, your toilet may leak. So that's another reason like I, why I like to spend the extra 14 and just go ahead and get a new tank to bowl kit. I'm gonna go ahead and toss these in the trash. I'm also gonna go ahead and toss these in the trash and get a new pair of rubber gloves. All right, I got new rubber gloves on. And one thing about that black stuff, I highly encourage wearing the rubber gloves if you have them because that black stuff can be hard to get off your hands. So let's go ahead and flip this around. And we're gonna work on getting the rest of these off, the rest of these other parts out. Um, here's the old spud gasket. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And I don't know if you'll be able to tell or not, but this one has been malformed and definitely is going to be need to be replaced. Um, so once again, glad I bought that tanked bowl kit that includes the rubber gasket. I'm gonna toss this in the trash as well. All right, the next thing here is we're gonna loosen up this hex nut from the old fill valve. And you may need your vice grips to do that. So let me grab my pair here. And I'm just going to reach in, grab a hold of it, and loosen that up. I'll take the rest off by hand. Just pull it out and toss this here in the tub. All right, now I'm going to take out the flush valve. You'll notice here that there is a circular lock nut on this flush valve, whereas the replacement as I showed in the earlier portion of this video, is a hex nut. I'm going to reuse the circular one since the spud gasket itself is round. I want to keep that all kosher. So let's go ahead and remove this. I grabbed my bigger set of vice grips so I can get around this here. circular lock nut. I'm going to toss this in the tub as well. All right, before considering reusing the circular lock nut, you may just want to give it a look, make sure that the plastic itself is not brittle and that the threads on the inside are in good shape and not broken up or uh, anything like that. This one looks to be in good shape, which I'm happy about. I'm going to reuse this. Okay, so now we have an empty tank. There's nothing left in it. We can now go about inserting all of our new parts uh, to start the actual repair. All right, we're gonna start with the flush valve itself. Here's the replacement piece. Again, the only thing that we're gonna take off of this is the hex nut. And I'm gonna reuse the circular one. So just to kind of show you here side by side, hex, circular. All right, simple enough. So take your new flush valve, put the flush lever through the arm. Go ahead and put, and I'll flip it around. Hold on to the new flush valve. Hold on to the new flush valve inside and go ahead and just lightly attach the circular nut here. Hand tighten that as best you can. Grab your vice grips and 
tighten it up a bit. Don't over tighten it. Again, this is plastic, so you don't want to go too rough with it. Okay. All right, so after hand tightening that and giving it a little extra turn with your vice grip, uh, we can now see that that piece is done. Stop cap is in working order. And now it's time to go ahead and put in our fill valve. Okay, so here are some of the parts that we're dealing with with the fill valve. Here we have the uh, refill clip. I'm going to set that off here to the side. We have the refill tube. And then we have the shank washer. Just this piece here. And then we also have a lock nut. The plastic piece here, like this. And then, of course, we have the fill valve here itself. So, the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to take this shank washer and we're going to take it flat side up and we're going to place it onto the threaded shank of the fill valve, like that. All the way up to the top. And then the next thing we have is this plastic collar here, which can control the height of the fill valve as it sits inside your tank. So I'm going to loosen up this collar and push it up, and then I'm going to take the shaft off and just give it a pull. And then you'll be left here with just this piece, which I am now going to insert into the tank. Now we're going to attach this with the lock nut. Now we're only going to hand tighten this. This is plastic on plastic here, and over tightening can result in cracking of the plastic, which would then result in a leak, and we certainly don't want that. So put that on and hand tighten that down. And believe me, you'll be fine. All right, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and attach the actual fill valve inside. Put this around. Like that. I'm going to insert that on the shaft. I'm going to press it down. And I'm going to try to keep it so that the float will hit about at the same level as where the water line was in the previous setup. Somewhere right about that, and we'll test that out and see how that works out later. Once I'm comfortable with that, I'm going to slip down that plastic collar to lock it in place. Now we're going to take our refill tube and attach it to the nipple of the fill valve, which is this piece right here. little push and we're going to take the other end and we're going to pop it right into the top of the stop cap of the flush valve and let me push that in there now if you have excess hose you can take some scissors to shorten it if needed and you know maybe this is coming up and touching your lid or something like that you can shorten that it's not a big deal um, just obviously don't cut off too much all right, that concludes the replacement of the flush valve and the fill valve. And now we're going to take our tanked bowl kit and remove the spud gasket and attach it to the back side of the tank around the circular nut. get that all the way around it and have it flush as possible with the tank itself all the way around. I'll give you a little side upside top side view of that.
One thing I forgot to mention, in this particular installation, I am not going to need this refill clip. So I'm just gonna toss that off to the side. All right, before we attach the tank back to the bowl, um, we're going to take our first set of screws and I'm gonna walk through the uh, exact order in which you assemble the washers. So to begin with, uh, you're gonna take one of your screws and one of the rubber washers and you're gonna put that all the way up through to the top. Flush with the flat head of the screw. Okay, do that for the other two. All right, so once that's done, you're just gonna go ahead and insert these from the inside part of the tank. Now we're going to take a metal washer with the nut and we're going to slide it on, slide them onto the screws. And start to thread on the nuts. So what I do here is I just take the screw, I pull it taut, and I thread the nut all the way up to the top and hand tighten it as best I can. And then I take my 14 millimeter and I will use that to give it a better, better grip, better hand tighten. I don't want to go too far because I don't want to crack the porcelain in the toilet, but I want to make sure that I have a good enough of the seal with that rubber washer on the other end to prevent water from leaking out. Now we're gonna take our tank and attach it back to the bolt. And we're just gonna thread our screws right through those holes and match them up. All right, now we're gonna be working from the underside of the, of the bowl and we're gonna attach the rest of the washers from the tank to bowl kit. And the first one that's gonna go on is going to be the rubber washer, followed by the metal washer, and then you're going to attach the nut. Uh, and then again, hand tighten it with your 14 millimeter um, hex. All right, so after all of the bolts have been tightened up, it's time to put back on our coupling nut onto the fill valve. Now we're going to do that right here. Move that on up. I'm just going to hand tighten that too. Okay, that's hand tightened. And if it makes you feel better, you can use your vice grip and maybe give that a quarter churn extra just to make sure it's it's on there good. But again, you don't want to over tighten uh, plastic on plastic. Uh, so once that's done, go ahead and grab a towel, and place it underneath um, around the tank because the next step is is we're gonna we're gonna turn on the water. Okay, do whatever makes you feel comfortable with your towel coverage, so to speak, and then we're time to turn on the water. As you're turning it on, uh, turn it on slowly and just check for leaks as you gradually turn it on. That way if it starts to leak on you, it's not gonna gush out and then you can quickly turn it back off. See, it's starting to slowly fill with water. And now we can get a better idea if we're gonna have any leakage or not. I like to look in between the tank and the bowl. That's where you're first gonna see some things. You also wanna keep an eye here on your coupling nut from the supply line. 
to the fill valve, make sure that there's no leaks there. So far everything's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the water a little bit more. fully on now no leaks so far so good All right, we'll let this fill up and we'll give a test flush here in a little bit okay so the tank has finished filling no leaks we're looking pretty good uh, the height adjustment of the fill valve looks to be all right you can kind of see where the old water line used to be so at most I might be a quarter of an inch off not too bad there I might make an adjustment to see if I can get it to come up a little bit higher but more importantly here looking at the flush valve we can see that the water line is actually just below that level there which is where we want it so in all actually in all actuality I think I'll leave it alone so let's go ahead and give this a test flush uh, we're gonna check for leaks at that stage if everything checks out we're good. We'll put the lid back on and call it a day. On the first test flush, instead of pushing down on the flush lever, I like to just kind of reach in and just grab the tip of the flush valve and give it a gentle pull and let that water kind of slowly leach out a little bit and stop it and check for any other leaks. If there is none, then I'll just go ahead and let it flush all the way. That way you have better control over the flow of the water out of the tank and you can push that flush valve right back down if you do encounter a leak. All right, so no problems there. Let's give this thing a real flush, flush and we can call this project complete. Uh, if this video helped you out in any way, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for taking the time to watch.